Hello everyone and welcome to this series of tutorials where I'll be teaching you how to make an interaction system for a third person game such as the one shown in this clip. By the end of this series, your interaction system will be able to detect multiple interactive objects within a volume, select the closest one and then display a widget to let you know you can interact with the object. We'll use a light switch as an example, but the functionality can be used for all kinds of interactive objects. Let's go! Okay, so to kick things off, I wanted to look at the game and see if we can learn a thing or two from it in order to incorporate them into our own project. So here I have opened Nier Automata, which is the only game, the only third person game I happen to have installed right now. And as you can see, now I get close to an interactive object, such as this pig, I get a prompt to interact with it. And what I want to point out is that it doesn't really matter where the camera is pointing to, or where is my character looking to. As long as I am near this pig, I get the option to interact with it. So the interaction system depends on my position and not my orientation, and it doesn't depend on the camera at all. And this interaction system pretty much works the same in any kind of third-person game. So if you want to go ahead and check out some other games, that's probably a good exercise. But for now, we're ready to move on. Alright, so we're back in Unreal and the first thing I did was create a new project using the third-person template that comes with the engine. What we'll do now is work on this character so that it has the interaction functionality we're looking for. So we'll jump right into our text editor and open the header and implementation files from our character. The first thing we want to do is to create a volume around our character which will let us know whenever we're close to another actor in the scene. This volume can be any of the primitive shapes, but we'll use a box because the size of each side can be specified, unlike, say, a sphere, where you can only modify the radius and that's it. We'll do so by creating a private section in our header file and adding an ear property, which will be editable anywhere, and make it a new box component pointer. We'll call it interaction box. Now in the implementation file, we'll initialize it inside the constructor by using the create default sub object function. Next, let's attach it to the root component, which is the capsule component. Back in the Unreal Editor, go ahead and compile the code, and once it's done, open your character's blueprint. But first, let me move this blueprint into a new folder which will contain only blueprints, you know, to keep everything organized. Here you can see the box component we just created, and immediately notice it's too small. Let's click on it and modify the size of each side in the details panel. That should be good enough. Next order of business is to check for overlapping actors with this box. To do so, let's use the onComponent begin overlap function. So let's go back into the header file and create the tick and begin playing functions inside the respective sections. Create the implementations for each function and add the super begin play and super tick functions. Inside the begin play function, we'll call the on begin overlap function member, then use the dot operator and use the add dynamic macro. This macro allows us to call a function whenever the box begins overlapping with another actor. We'll name this new function on box begin overlap, which we'll have to define in our header file next. This function has a predefined set of arguments, which I'll copy from another piece of code. I'll scroll slowly so you can copy said arguments. Now, 
create the implementation of this function and we'll leave it empty for now because we have to create our interaction interface first. Compile your code to check for errors. So in order to check whether an actor can be interacted with or not, we'll use an interface. If you don't know what an interface is, in a nutshell, it's a piece of code that you can stick into all kinds of objects, even if they're completely unrelated, and have them inherit the same functionality. This gives us a powerful and flexible architecture to develop different types of interactive objects. So, in the editor, create a new C++ class, which will inherit from the Unreal Interface class, and name it Interaction Interface. Once the code has compiled, we'll get the header and implementation files, and this is where we'll create a template for the interaction functions. To do so, in the public section, create a virtual void function named interact with me. If you don't know what a virtual function is, you can think of it as a template that the child derived from this class can implement in their own specific way. Create its implementation and we'll just leave it like this, completely empty. The idea is for each interactive object to inherit from this class and there the details of the implementation will become relevant. Don't worry, we'll look at this in detail next. For now, compile your code to check for errors. Alright, so now that the code has compiled, we'll create our very first interactive object. We'll use a light switch as an example, so go ahead and create a new C++ class which will be an actor, and name it light switch. Remember, an actor is anything we can spawn in world. If you go into your header file, you'll see that this light switch inherits from the A actor class, and we want it to inherit from our interaction interface as well. So first, let's hash include our interaction interface .h. Add the other clones next. Here, you'll see that we have a red squiggly line, which is due to the way we wrote the interaction interface class. Whenever you're adding an interface to a class, remember to change this U for an I. I can't remember off the top of my head why this is, but it's explained somewhere in the UE4 documentation, if you're curious. The cool part about all of this is that, as you can see, we can type virtual void interact with me and it shows up in the predictions from the text editor. This means that this generic actor which we just created now has the interact with me function. So now if we add the override keyword, we're telling the compiler that we are gonna create an implementation of this function that is specific to this one and only actor. So create the implementation and for now we'll use a very simple log to show that this function has been called, like so. Next, we want this actor to have a visual representation in the world, so let's add a couple components to it. Both of them will be U properties and editable anywhere. The first component will be an UC component, which we'll call underscore root component. And the second component will be a uStatic mesh component, which we'll call light switch mesh. Remember that root component is already defined, that's why I'm adding the underscore at the beginning. Now, inside the constructor for this class, we'll initialize both components using the create defaults of object function. And don't forget to assign this new underscore root component to the predefined root component. Finally, attach the mesh to the root component using setup attachment. Compile your code once more, and the next step is to create a new blueprint class derived from the light switch class, which we'll call bp underscore light switch. Open the blueprint editor, and for the mesh I'll use a simple cube, which will be scaled to look flat. Move it up from the ground so it is approximately at shoulder height. Next, we'll add an actual light to our light switch. So, back in the header file, create a new U property of the type Edit Anywhere and add an U point light component. Don't forget to hash include components slash point light component. 
initialize it inside the constructor as well with the same create default sub object function and attach it to the root component. Next, we'll have the light actually turn on when we call the interact with me function. So in the begin play function, call the set intensity function from the point light component and set it to zero. Next, go into the interact with me function and once again use the set intensity function and put in a value of 10,000. And with this, our light switch is complete for now, and you can compile your code to check for any errors. Alright, since this video is getting a tad bit too long, I'm gonna cut it off here, and in the next part of this tutorial, we'll uh, set up the collisions for all our objects, and we'll also call the interact with me function from within our character. And finally, we'll be able to test our interaction system for the very first time. So if you found any helpful information in this video, please don't forget to give it a like. And if you want to see more tutorials like this in the future, please subscribe to my channel as well. And thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next part.